Can too much protein on carne engage the Randall cycle due to gluconeogenesis? No. Like seven, eight grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, I heard. 50% of the amino acids are gluco um, neogenic. The primary one is basically alanine, and it varies with the others to a very low level. Your, you know, you know, if you can, most tribal people can only man, manage about at most four plus um, grams of, uh, you know, per kilo. So if you're looking at, you know, for that amount, seven or eight, you're talking about. You know, there, there probably is a threshold at some point. You know, four grams is not a problem. You know, so if you're four grams. talking about 1.1 1. 1 kilos for this is a 70 kilo person 1.1 1. 1 kilos or two point nearly two point two and a half pounds that is four grams of per kilogram so to get up to eight you would basically have to be um, eating five pounds of you know to get to that level that you're showing now you'd have to eat five pounds or you know two and a half two and a half kilograms i don't think most people would be able to eat that amount i wouldn't you know if you could actually eat two and a half kilograms of meat i take my hat off to you you're pretty good because <laughs> i can't you know I'll actually have a quarter of that most of the time, and sometimes I may get a bit higher. So, yeah, that's quite a lot of meat. You know, we're talking about five pounds of meat for a 70 kilo person, which is a 154 pound person. You know, now that's a lot. That's a shit lot, shit load. You know, so the maximum uh, that most people in that weight will get up to is way below that half that and at half that there's no issue whatsoever it's demand driven now at seven or eight could you get some supply driven potentially but more than likely your body will actually excrete excess or not take it in um, at that level it'll just actually slow down peristalsis and actually absorb it much slower you know I haven't found any research to show supply-driven, um, uh, you know, gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis, since it's only demand-driven, and I've never seen any research showing supply, supply-driven. Um, you know, you can actually get supply-driven is if I actually put massive amounts in, I should see a massive bump in gluconeogenesis. That doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. There's no research. You know, if you can find some research, I will pat you on the back. There is no research that shows that anywhere in the literature. None, zero, nada. You know, all that happens is if you eat excess amounts of protein, like if you were to sit down and, and you know, over a, an hour or two, put down five pounds of, of, of beef or two and a half kilograms nearly of beef, you know, and you're 70 kilos, 150, 54 pound person, and you're able to put that amount of meat down, all that will happen is you'll get a bit tired, you'll sort of sit back and relax, and your body will absorb that over double the amount of time. Rather than absorbing it over six hours, it'll absorb it over 12 hours. That's the wonderful thing about taurine that regulates peristalsis. And it will actually slow down the gut motility. And so you'll still be getting at the same rate. You'll be taking it up. You'll just be basically absorbing those proteins at a much slower pace. So even if you manage to put that down, it still will not force up gluconeogenesis and still will not. Just because a glyc um, gluconeogenic, it doesn't mean just because a gluconeogenic that it's going to happen. There's only so much of an amino pool through the middle part of the small intestine. You can only take so much in at any one time it takes about four hours after you've eaten quite a lot of protein before 
the um, the lower sphincter in the stomach starts releasing some of that stuff in the small intestine and it slowly comes through. And how fast it comes through depends on peristalsis. And taurine is a regulator and can actually slow it down if there's excess aminos because the signaling from the stomach saying, we've got excess stuff coming in, you know, slow it down and slowly absorb it. And it will just take more hours. So, for instance, if you eat a, lot, a little bit of meat, you'll absorb much slower. Sorry, a, a little bit of meat, you'll absorb much faster. You're, you know, And if you eat a lot of meat, you'll slow it down and absorb it slowly over multiple hours, six, eight, and potentially even more hours, depending on how much you've consumed. Most people only consume about four grams per kilo body weight, half of that, and they will absorb it over six to eight hours depending on the composition of the of the aminos. So they'll absorb it at that rate. So, you know, it'll be over multiple hours. That's why when you have a lot of protein, you feel satiated. You don't feel hungry. You can't eat anything. Your body just goes, I don't want anything. Leave me alone. So, no, it cannot happen. It just defies physiology. Physiology is smarter than that. It's not stupid. The body's not stupid. It knows how, you know, it's not going to dump it out the back and lose all that nutrition. It will just slow slow down its uptake. That's all it does. And it just fills up an amino pool, it uses it. And it fills up another amino pool, it uses it. It fills up another amino pool over multiple hours. That's all it does. That is why it's demand-driven. Any gluconeogenesis that you get, and it doesn't have, and it will not affect at all the Randall cycle. And the reason we know that is because we see that when you eat a lot of meat, you end up with an insulin to glucagon ratio of 1.2. Sorry, 1.3. That's it. It may just go slightly above 1.3. That is it. As long as you don't put any carbohydrate in, it's zero carb, just fat and protein, it goes to that level. And as long as glucagon is regulated within those physiological limits by insulin, and insulin is not too high, and glucagon is not too high. If glucagon is very low and insulin is very high, all that will happen is that excess energy will get converted to fat through the liver and get stored. If, on the other hand, glucagon is very high, it will just oxidize things very, very rapidly. But that doesn't happen. That only happens when you're fasting. Insulin goes right down to zero, insulin to glucagon 0 0.8. But when you're actually eating a steak, it goes to 1.3. That means glucagon is much lower. So you're less able, unless glucagon is high, you can't actually produce even the, the cursory level of gluconeogenesis. You'll only produce just as much as the body wants. So it is irrelevant how many aminos come in. Completely irrelevant. As I said, you know, I'll build a statue for you if you can actually find something that shows different. That doesn't exist. I've searched it. Absolute doesn't exist. Crackpots will make up nonsense on on uh, uh, idiotic channels. But I've, I've also got a video on mine that actually covers this. Um, nah, it's not an issue. doesn't matter how much protein. It'll just slow down the amount, of, you know, or you may even throw it up because your body can't handle too much and say, fuck off, I've had enough, you know. You've just put too much down. I can't slow things down any 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 further, you know. So, you know, there's a there's a limit, <laughs> you know, that your body will take <laughs> before it starts sort of going, ur, ur, you know, enough, you know. So, I wouldn't worry. It's just nonsense. If anybody's saying that they, you know, they just dickheads, assholes, um, lunatics, um, completely deranged nutcrackers um you can describe them in multiple different colorful ways i just call them crackpots and morons <laughs>